Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maca here with completed episode number 79. In today's video, we are talking about Canadian football 2017, probably the worst game I may have ever played. Now, if you're new to the channel or I've never watched a completed episode, completed is a series where I take a few minutes to talk about a game that I recently got all the gamer score in. I tell you guys about the achievements and trophies, and I tell you guys about whether it's worth your time and money. As always, if you're interested in checking out more completed episodes, I have provided a link to the playlist in the description. Now, as a small disclaimer, this is a judgment-free zone. If you're part of the achievement community, you probably already know that sometimes people play bad games for achievements. And if you're not part of the community, that might seem like a little bit of a hard concept to grasp. But I heard there were easy points. I decided to pick up the game and stream it for people who are interested in seeing what it's like. And although it's really bad, I don't really regret getting the game. Hopefully that makes sense for the non-achievement people out there. So, Canadian Football 2017. It came out on July 26th. I played it on July 29th and did it in about an hour and a half. Now, I believe most people will be able to complete it in under two hours. I've also written a couple of solutions for TrueAchievements.com, which should bring the average down to about an hour for the normal person who kind of understands football just a little bit. During your one to two hours with the game, you'll be trying to unlock the 10 achievements, which are awarded for a variety of tasks, like completing passes, getting a certain amount of rush yards, kicking some field goals, and making some defensive plays. The last achievement you will see me get in the game is called Robo Passer 10, which is for completing 10 passes in a row in a single game. And because of how the passing system works, it is actually pretty difficult, and I imagine this will be the last achievement for many people. The achievement difficulty, however, I will be giving a 3 out of 10, and that is completely dependent on the fact that you're playing with two controllers and controlling both of the teams. If you don't have a second controller and have to play this game against the computer, I would imagine that achievement difficulty probably skyrockets to a 5 or a 6 out of 10, although honestly, I'm not 100% sure. If you are going to pick this game up for Gamerscore, I would highly recommend that you have the two controllers necessary in order to play with yourself. Now, the completed episodes always end off with me talking about the fun factor, almost like a mini review. Before we get into that, I do want to mention that if you're looking to buy the game on the Xbox Live Store or anything like that, I have included some links in the description, as well as to the Xbox Achievements Forum page and the True Achievements game page if you're looking for help about the game. Now, for the fun factor, I'm going to give this game a 1 out of 10. I believe that may be the lowest score I have ever given a game on the completed series. This game may even be worse than Ben-Hur, which was obviously personally my game of the year last year. Now, maybe you think I'm being overly harsh, or maybe you think that I don't necessarily get sports games, but let me try to explain why I think this game deserves the 1 out of 10 I gave it. And unfortunately, there seem to be a lot of reasons. Number one, the graphics look like they're from the PlayStation 2, maybe an early PlayStation 3 game. They're pretty bad. On the audio level, we do have some very, very generic rock music, but literally nothing stands out. And it's to the point where there's not even any menu music. The menus themselves barely work sometimes. And you might think that you could look past all of those issues because it's a Canadian football game and maybe you're really into the CFL. However, this isn't actually a licensed game and you won't be playing with any of the CFL teams. Instead, you'll be playing with generic teams just named after cities like Edmonton, Ottawa, and Toronto. Now, I used to actually play a lot of sports games back in the day. ESPN NFL 2K5 was actually one of my favorite games growing up. And I'd be willing to look past some of the issues I've mentioned if the gameplay was actually pretty good. However, I found personally that the game had very bad controls and sometimes it barely worked. Whether it was my menu freezing and me having to call a timeout because I couldn't snap the ball or whether it was a field goal that was automatically kicked for me without any user input, whether it was my controllers getting mixed up for some reason and signing in on the wrong profiles, or whether it was people randomly fumbling the ball on snap for literally no reason. Unfortunately, this game was a complete chore to play, and there are very few redeeming qualities. For that reason, I do give it a 1 out of 10 for fun factor, and I do not recommend it. It's probably not worth your money. However, if you're really into gamer score, you might just pick it up anyways. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said earlier, please check out the links in the description, and hopefully I see you in the next video. Special thanks to Darth Dave 89 for supporting the show on Patreon. Peace.